Welcome to all the dignitaries on the dais, participating delegates at the fourth edition of uh, Rajasthan IoT Summit with the theme Building a Smart, Secure and Connected Ecosystem. We are glad that we are able to organize this program in physical format after two years and uh, we are grateful to Mukda ma'am and the support of STPI. And uh, over last few years, IoT has become the most important technologies and now that we can connect everyday objects like kitchen appliances, cars, thermostats, baby monitors to internet via embedded devices and seamless communication is uh, possible between people, process and things. All this offers tremendous opportunities for both the traditional businesses as well as new age startups to unlock the value of business. We have a learned mix of speakers from government, industry and academia who will provide some meaningful insight on how we can leverage technology for greater efficiency and profitability. With these words, I would request Mr. Randhir Vikram Singh who is co-chairman of Hiki Rajasthan State Council and CMD of Mandawa Hotels. Just for the benefit of participants, I would do a brief introduction that he is a stalwart of the concept of heritage tourism and is one of the founder members of Indian Heritage Hotel Association. And he has helped put Mandawa and Shekhawati on the world tourism map and was among the first to convert his family old castle, dating back to 1755 into a heritage property in 1979. And he has regularly interacted with central and state governments for the tourism industry uh, issues. And his efforts in the field of heritage tourism help have numerous heritage properties become established as a hotel and in turn led to job creation and entrepreneurship. And uh, with these words, I would like to welcome you for your welcome remarks. Good morning. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Ms. Mudda Sinha, Secretary, Science and Technology, Government of Rajasthan, Mr. Pratosh Dandaryal, Director, Software Technology Park of India, Dr. Rishi Mohan Bhatnagar, President, Aries Communications, Dr. Ajay Data, Co-Chairman, Fiki and Fiki IT and ITE's com uh, committee and MD Data Group of Industries, Mr. Bimal Patwari, Chairman, Fiki Rajasthan Subcommittee on IT and Startups, and CEO, Pinnacle Techno uh, Technotech, participating delegates, friends of the media. We are pleased to present the fourth edition of Rajasthan Internet of Things summit with the theme building smart secure connected ecosystem technology has been a great enabler and helped us sustain a lot of activities during the pandemic and i'm sure that we'll witness an accelerated adoption of technology in times to come emerging technologies such as internet of things iot are shaping our lives and disrupting the traditional businesses at a rare, uh, rate of change never seen before in history. Enterprises and service providers have been looking at IoT as a key enabler to drive digital transformation and to unlock the operational e efficiencies. Advances in artificial intelligence coupled with improved connectivity and real-time communications are exponentially uh, growth agencies generating IOTs. After going through three industrial revolutions that brought about significant technological developments over a period of more than two centuries, the world is currently witnessing the fourth industrial revolution, which is taking technology adaptions by the world's factories to a whole new level. The fourth industrial revolution, or the Industry Four, is bringing together the different silos in real production systems via network, allowing real-time sharing of facilities, machine-to-machine -machine, and human-to-machine intera interactions of unprecedented speed and scale. This is giving rise to seamless integrated value chains and interconnected cyber and physical systems, enabling decentralization decision-making and unprecedented levels of automation. 
the distinguish of the entire manufacturing value chains starting from the procurement of raw material and extending right to the customer service using mobile data devices, communication networks, sensors, and AutoCAS is completely transforming how the world is factoring operations. To unleash the travel value of Industry 4, it is to be made accessible and affordable for the MSME sector, putting MSME sector at the forefront of the fourth industrial revolution we need to significantly push in terms of funds, infrastructure, technical know-how and exposure to make the benefits of Industry 4 accessible to the bottom of the pyramid. With a large manufacturing base, a significant IT industry and expanding consumer base, we are in a unique position to fulfill harness potential in Industry 4 provided there is an enabling ecosystem bring these individual comp components together. Giving the strong role of advanced technology in Industry 4 there is a need to de de demystify the core skills required of the industry for through education and enablement. FIKI is committed to work closely with the government and other stakeholders to put Rajasthan and the nation at large in a bright spot. We are glad to provide a platform for collaboration of stakeholders from different industries to develop a new solution for our future. Last but not the least, I compliment the FIKI Rajasthan IT and Startup Subcommittee led by Mr. Bimal Patwari for his initiative and wish all the success to the team. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, rightly said, the uh, benefits of IoT need to percolate down to the vast MSME segment of the state. And uh, now I would request Mr. Bimal Patwari, who chairs Vicky Rastan Subcommittee on IT and Startups and is CEO of Pinnacle Infotech. Just a brief introduction, he is a first generation entrepreneur and founder of Pinnacle Infotech, the global leader in BIM services to international engineering and construction industry. After graduating as an electronics engineer from IIT Khadakpur, uh, he earned his postgraduate diploma in management from IIM Lucknow, where he was awarded the director's gold medal for academic excellence. And starting with a small setup in 1991, Pinnacle has success successfully executed 7,500 plus BIM projects over the last 30 <coughs> years and has made India prominent in the map of global BIM industry. Some of the iconic projects which Pinnacle has executed worldwide include Jedda Tower, Lucelle Stadium, Lord's Cricket Ground, Compton, Edric Stands, Battersea Power Station, Intel Corporation, Amazon Data Center, IIT. Bilai, Dubai International Airport C4, Ambuja City Center, Patna, Hazrat uh, Shah Jalal International Airport, etc. In fact, football is in news these days for all wrong reasons, but the uh, FIFA World Cup stadiums have been successfully designed and contributed by his company. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Atulji. <coughs> Good morning, all of you. Uh, dear Ma'am Mukda Sinaha, Secretary Science and Technology, Sri Randhir Vikram Singh Ji, my dear distinguished guests on the stage and friends. Once again, I welcome you all to this event today and I thank Fiki for organizing this summit and event and I believe that this technology is going to be a game changer. Already it's a game changer in our life. And today I would like to address that how, what can we ex expect from this technology in the coming times? Vikram Randhir Singh Ji, he explained that how, what is IoT? And I want to demystify today and give you some examples that what can we expect from this technology? So friends, it's very simple and you are having a discussion before this meeting and Mukdaji was telling us that in ancient times and before also we had this same things but now we have put it in a different way, we have packaged it and so essentially IoT means it collects data 
processes it and uses it for the our benefit now let me give you some examples so that it can illustrate that what exactly iot does you know a technology has been developed called neural link by elon musk he demonstrated it successfully so what they are doing is they are putting a microchip in our brain they have done it for animals now the next stage is to put a microchip in our brain which will continuously give feedback to the computer on the status of our brain if there are any problems it can diagnose that what is the blood flow if there is any clots or there is any uh, anything abnormal anything that is not okay in your brain you know ma'am you are also talking about the the underbelly of the technology so when i saw this technology i was worried that if husband and wife come to know about this i don't know what will happen you know the how much the marriages will last <laughs> section 121 of the <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or if the if, if the boss comes to know what employee is thinking about the boss in the company there is going to be disaster so these are always the underbellies of that let's come to uh health today we have developed such beautiful wearables so i can just wear a smart watch or a smart band which will contain all my health data i am a diabetic i take insulin every day suppose i am traveling to jaipur or any other place and suppose something goes wrong with me god forbid so how will everybody know that what has gone wrong so what will this health this simple thing that is across uh, my wrist it will have all my data i have come to jaipur so it will immediately connect to all the hospitals which are in the list of my insurance providers so all the hospitals will know that i have arrived in jaipur i have a risk of diabetes and they will be all be connected and if anything goes wrong with me immediately it will be alerted and the ambulance will be on the way so this is the level of technology that we are talking of it's already there today you know all our you know this remote e doctor in villages how can we take our latest medicine to the villages you know these there are so many instruments today our cell phone they can measure so many of our body parameters and it can help a doctor it can help a medical institute to diagnose these problems agriculture there are so many sensors today already there are so many nice entrepreneurs and the government is doing some fantastic work in collecting this data from different areas you know what is the moisture in the soil what is the soil content what is the you know locust that we are talking about you know anything that is infecting we can get advance warning through these devices because these devices can collect any data let me give you one more example in the construction industry uh, currently uh, our company we can be really proud that from jaipur you know as uh, atul ji said that we are doing the top engineering work around the world our engineers and architects we have designed the the lucel stadium which is going to be the the number one stadium where the closing function and the final match will be held in qatar the whole project was engineered and built by supported by our team now coming to we are doing a digital twin for dubai airport what is that i went to dubai airport and i asked the maintenance manager that if the water leaks how much time will you take to fix it he said in the arrival lounge i have just come and the water there is a drop drop water and they said uh, it will take at least 30 minutes because i don't know the source of water could be sprinkler water it could be drainage water it could be drinking water it could be hvac water and i'll be lucky because 
if I don't get the right expert, because the documents are so poorly organized. So we, have, we are consultants to Dubai government and for last six years. So they gave us the task. We went to Terminal 1. Uh, we did that six months back. So they told us to survey all the assets. So we took a laser scanner inside the Terminal 1. We scanned the whole airport. We made the list of all the assets. They gave us their list of assets and we compared it. The amazing thing was 40% of the assets that is there in the airport's asset list is not there on the site. And this is Dubai airport. And the second part is even more alarming. 70% of the assets, important assets, sir, on the airport is not there in their asset register. So, like that was alarming. So now they have given us the whole airport. So we are just starting the T1 departure. And slowly, the, what they want to do ultimately, they ultimately want to put all IoT sensors all over the airport so that you can know what will fail when. Suppose there is a pump, water pump. Now there are thousands of water pump in any airport, big airport, like Dubai airport or any other airport. Now each of the pump is very important water pump because the, when the flight comes in, lands, the water has to be, you know, filled into the airport, uh, in the flight. The sewage line has to be taken back. If the pump doesn't work, the flight doesn't move. How do you predict that this pump is going to fail or not? What is the life of that pump? So you have a very simple IoT sensor which you attach to the pump. It will tell you what is the temperature of the pump, the vibration of the pump, the current flowing through the pump. So using my predictive analytics, now we can say of all the 10,000 pumps in the airport, we, we can put them into three categories. So I'll have a dashboard, green, yellow, red. So you immediately know where to focus your attention. Today, we have great speakers, so I don't want to take away the time from them. <clears throat> Similarly, every sphere of our life is going to change. Automobile. You know, the cars. Dr. Bhatnagar was telling us that how many sensors, hundreds of sensors, they're put in each and every car and they're monitoring regularly on these millions of cars all around the world. Today, the car will speak to the <clears throat> signal. Today, you know, human being, we see that there's a red light, green light, or whatever light, and we move. Now the car will talk to all the signals in the, <clears throat> in the city, and they will find out which is the shortest way, where is the crowd, where is the traffic. So you don't have to intervene, no Google map. Your car will talk to them. Finally, last but not least, the IoT has not even touched our Gai Mata. You know, in Austria, they have put a sensor inside the stomach of the Gai Mata. And it's prevalent. Very, and what is the sensor doing? It is measuring the temperature, the inner body temperature, rumination, pH levels, movement activity, everything. So now, because in the big dairy farms, there are thousands of cows and buffaloes and the livestock. How do you monitor these livestock? So, and this is implemented technology. This company is called uh, Smackstech and they're doing it all over the world. So, it will now tell you what is the status of your Gaia Mata? Is she comfortable? Any problems? Because anything that you can know in advance, you can cure it much better, right? Whether it's heart problem, kidney problem, any kind of problem. So, friends, it is going in a big way. Logistics, another example that is very close to my heart, <clears throat> because we are doing Amazon data centers all over the world. You'll be amazed in Amazon data center, which could be, some of them are, uh, sorry, this logistics center, warehouses, 
they are sometimes bigger than the biggest stadiums in Jaipur. They may have 90,000 type of products, a typical warehouse. When a big truck comes, there are 500 robots inside the warehouse. In 20 minutes, they will unload all the material, these robots, and keep it everywhere in the warehouse, well, you know, all codified and managed, so that you know where the material is, so that when you are dispatching, the robot will automatically go and pick it up from that place, and it is randomly stored. It is not stored ki yaha pe medicine hai, yaha pe ye, yaha pe ye. Because robot doesn't need to do that. You can just store where the space is available according to my algorithm that which is going to move out because we have the data that which product will go move out first. So it is randomly storing in the in the whole uh, warehouse and it can uh, it, it has all the intelligence. A great example of what Amazon has done all over the world. So friends, let me not take more time, as I said, because there are great speakers we have. I once again thank uh, Fiki for organizing this event. Uh, we have distinguished speakers, and thank you very much. Let's take India great. Let's make India great. We, we people, we have the talent. You know, we are the people, we, we need to let it free. We need to give our talent the space, the platform, and they can do amazing things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, for sharing uh, live example how technology is transforming businesses and our lives. And moving further, our next speaker is Dr. Ajay Data, who is co-chairman of Wiki IT ITS committee and is managing director of Data Group of Industries. And uh, brief introduction, Dr. Data is an award-winning techno-commercial founder and CEO of multiple technology companies and manages the traditional family oil business as well. Data XGen technology received global recognition for bringing first of its kind linguistic technologies. Uh, Linguistic email addresses technology supporting email IDs in Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, Telugu, Cyrillic, Chinese, Marathi plus 22 more languages. He has been investing in mentoring and mentoring startups and very actively contributing to the entrepreneurial ecosystem. He regularly speaks at various platforms for entrepreneurship, internet governance, universal acceptance, technology and innovations. And uh, he is the first, uh, he became the first Indian Asian to be elected as chair of global organization, the Universal Acceptance Steering Group. And uh, he was recently, he has recently collaborated uh, by UNESCO for creating joint report on bringing next billion online. And he is chief mentor of NGIS program for startups in Rajasthan under government of India and sought after leader by young entrepreneurs for mentoring and guidance. Over to you, Dr. Did. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Fikki, for uh, this opportunity. Uh, honorable distinguished guest, friends and colleagues uh, in front of me. Technology is supposed to make our life com simple, not complicated. And I believe that our conversation about the topic today should be also that way. That doesn't go complicated and over the heads who do not belong to technology. So let me try to uh, define a little bit about IoT, which is simple to understand, easy to understand, and it goes into everybody's mind. IoT is all about sensors and actuators. Sensors are, which can sense, actuators are the devices which will get the command from the computer and make the things move. Let us say in a car, computer will de design, decide whether the car has to move backward or forward that direction will go to actuator and actuator will make the device move. That's the thing. And the, the, these devices must be connected with internet wirelessly or wired. These are all IoT devices. So, sab ke paas examples hain. Apne paas ghar, abhi bata rahe the aapko ki jo ghadiye hai aapke hath mein, Fitbit bands hain, smart watches hain, jo wearable devices hain, ye sab IoT ke examples hain, jo sab gharo mein hote hain, cameras hain. 
जो अपने घरों में लगे हुए होते हैं उन घरों में कैमरा में क्या है वो कैमरे में एक सेंसर भी हो सकता है अगर आपने देखा होगा कि रात को आप अनेबल कर दें अगर आपके ड्राइंग रूम में लगा हुआ है तो अगर कोई मूवमेंट है तो वो कैमरा ही डिटेक्ट कर ले और आपको एक अलर्ट कर दे अलर्ट करने के लिए कहीं ना कहीं पर कोई साउंड बजेगा कोई मेल जाएगा कोई एस जाएगा ये ये कैमरे का काम नहीं है लेकिन कैमरा विल गिव द वर्क टू समबडी एंड दैट विल हैपन डायरेक्शन दिस इज़ एन आई ओ टी एग्जाम्पल ऐसे बहुत सारे एग्जाम्पल्स आपको दिए हैं चाहे वो एयरपोर्ट पे हो चाहे कोरोना टाइम में अगर हम देखें कैमरा लगा हुआ है उसके सामने आपको आना है इट विल डिटेक्ट द टेम्परेचर कि आपका टेम्परेचर क्या एंड विल नोटिफाई टू द लैब सेंस समथिंग इन दिस एंड सी वेदर यू आर पॉसिबली ए कोरोना इफेक्टेड और नॉट दिस इज अनदर एग्जाम्पल नाउ देर आर थर्मोमीटर्स एंड गिव मी ए लिटल फनियर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ए टॉयलेट सीट इन राजस्थान देर इज एन होटल वेयर देर इज अ टॉयलेट सीट एंड वेन यू एंटर टू द टॉयलेट इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली ओपन इट्स कवर एंड इट विल सेट द टेम्परेचर बेस्ड ऑन दैट एम्बियन टेम्परेचर ऑफ दैट सीट सो दैट सीट टेम्परेचर इज ऑटोमेटिकली गेटिंग अनेबल्ड एंड इफ यू इंस्टॉल द डिवाइस इन योर होम इट कैन एक्चुअली टेस्ट योर यूरिन सैम्पल एवरी डे एंड सेंड द रिपोर्ट टू द डॉक्टर दिस इज द लेवल ऑफ इंटरफ्रेंस इट कैन हैव फॉर वेरी वेरी वी वी आई पीज पीपल हुड लाइक टू गेट मॉनिटर्ड एवरी डे थ्राइस ए डे ऑल दोज डिवाइसिज आर कमिंग नाउ वेरेबल शर्ट्स आर कमिंग विच कैन गेट कनेक्टेड टू योर डॉक्टर हेल्थ इज अ वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल इन दिस डिवाइसिज बट लेट मी टॉक लिटल डिफरेंट हम आई ओ टी की बात कर रहे हैं वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मेकिंग लाइफ बेटर फॉर दोज पीपल हु अंडरस्टैंड इंग्लिश हु अंडरस्टैंड टेक्नोलॉजी हु अंडरस्टैंड हु आर डूइंग समथिंग इन देयर लाइफ हाउ अबाउट द पीपल हु डू नॉट नो इंग्लिश इन दिस कंट्री एट एट ऑल सो लेट अस टेक एन एग्जाम्पल मैम योर अटेंशन लेट अस टेक ए फार्मर हु फॉल्स एल एंड गोज टू ए डॉक्टर एंड रिमेंबर ही डजन नो इंग्लिश How does he read his prescription? Doctor writes in English. Then he goes to the shop. How does he buy a medicine? How does he take his medicine every day? This is one example I am telling you where he is completely dependent on somebody for his basic fever medicine. अगर दो तीन medicine दे दी तो उसको ये भी नहीं पता है कि पहले कौन सी लेनी है बाद में कौन सी लेनी है He, because he don't know how to read he will be completely dependent on somebody how does this technology help what are we doing to help this and make the life more simpler for everyone not for selected few how do we make it simple so government of india meti have initiated under the directions of the prime minister for creating universities in the languages so now we have a university in rajasthan which is going to create engineers only in hindi language no english will be taught there similar universities are getting created in the country same thing is is this possible for medical same th- and how these technologies which are iot and combined technologies are going to enable and help to dif- bridge that gap which we need today in rajasthan alone you will know ma'am we are 50% women is uneducated how this technology is going to help how do we help them how do we ensure that they come in the same league what you and me are in this conference room everybody understands english but this is not the fact out of this room everybody is educated how do we can ensure that everybody comes up so how do we bridge that gap the technology has to bring in iot devices are going to definitely bring a more realistic change once the 5g also comes into play and let me tell you why 5g is a biggest revolution we will see in our lifetime on internet because this is going to add speed in our life a speed to transmit and that's the one very single parameter just like tires revolutionize the everything the wheels revolutionize the industry revolution the 5g will revolutionize iot as well and our lives will change forever so imagine a dog even as a person a farmer sitting in dosa or some, in somewhere in a remote village wants to show dr bhandari in jaipur today he has to come 
physically travel maybe have a video conferencing but the medical equipments cannot be operated on him sitting there in dosa and mr bhandari can see him or any doctor can see him here how do we ensure that these technologies which are available in future combining iot with 5g can give a stethoscope in every small village and top doctors in the country can see him can operate him can the vehicles move there and can the robotics can operate there how the iots will take place how iot will translate that medicine into hindi for me if my camera if my phone can translate and can give me a hearing aid can me give me a button where my prescription and my medicine can be read in the language i want can it happen like this all those technologies have to make the life simpler 5g is very important let me take a minute to make you explain what 5g and what 5g is going to make a difference so one thing is a stethoscope beat can be heard in real time almost in real time it is going to be almost 10x faster people are saying 100x faster also but let us take be realistic 10x faster than what we are having today so how does it make a difference and why it will happen 5g is going to make us see lot of towers around us because there is an ofdm technology where 5g transmits the data from multiple towers at one location so one file will reach to you from on one mobile from multiple towers that is the reason the speed gets increased so you can have seven eight towers sending one gb file to you it will reach 10 times faster eight times faster 20 times faster this file will reach very very fast that is how the data will also transmit to you now imagine you have the movie you have the camera you have the medical requirement you have the class and you can imagine that could this conference be exactly same looking in spite of i am at home or i am somewhere else and she uh, mukta sinha ji looked like sitting here but she is actually not this is the what the 5g will bring in our life that holograms will come the real real time situations will come and with combined of iot these things will become reality which might look a dream iot ka ek example hai thoda desi type example hai mahabharat mein sanjay was telling the entire story what's going on the uh, war ground and telling to uh, the trust here in the uh, in his home this is now been done by cameras exactly same thing at what is happening in fifa world cup what is showing in stadium at real time somewhere in the world a missile gets uh, fired and we come to know on our whatsapp here almost in real time maybe in a minute or two will it happen more live will it happen more faster and you cannot imagine how the th lives were going to change it has changed already in last uh, 20 years so ma'am when i got internet first time in rajasthan 1999 what was the speed of internet it was 33.6 kbps and what was the cost 4000 rupees for 100 hours so 4000 rupees lagte the 100 ghante ka internet milta tha and 33.6 kbps today we all get 4g at almost 200 250 rupees for the whole month and download speed is in gb and that was in hours so imagine that 10 din ke aapko 4000 rupees dene pad rahe the almost at 20 times lesser speed than what is today and we have come here today with the power of internet in our own hands there was no mobile at that time you could access internet only on computer so there was another limitation that you have to buy a computer which was almost 30 40000 rupees to use internet today you can buy, use a 5000 rupees device and you can use as much power as i have on my phone or a computer this is the revolution which has come in everybody's device, everybody's home we have almost 800 million customer who holds phone today smart devices they are all target customers they can buy sell anything they want they can consume content so today you need not to release a movie in cinema halls you can be overnight star just by youtube 
or any uh, OTT platform. This is happening already. This was not possible before. Technology is changing very, very fast and entering into our lives very, very fast. But we need to be very conscious about that it should make a difference, make it life not complicated, make it life easier. Make it life easier for everyone. Try to bring in everyone through that impact of technology, not just a small class of people. And last thing, and before I take my seat, technology for languages has a huge requirement to invest and huge business to come in. Government of India is supporting very well. Rajasthan government is also supporting it very well because of their policies in place already. So let me tell you, this is my favorite subject, so I, want, I should tell that. This government of India has launched domain names in 2014 in the language of your choice. How many of you know that you can register a domain name in Hindi today? You know? Good. Few people know about it. But I think everybody should have and everybody should know about it. And why it is important? Government of India has already created a policy, by the way, that all government websites would be in three languages. English, Hindi and a regional language of that state. That's going to be the mandate. That is that is already the law for mobile phones, by the way, if you don't know. That no mobile phone can be sold in India if it does not have a writing capability of these three languages, English, Hindi and regional language in Rajasthan. So Rajasthan, it is two, English and Hindi. Every phone must have a writing capability and 22 languages reading capability. That is the law of the country. You cannot sell a phone without that capability. And this is not right now, this is last 2018. So four years of this law is in place. That's, that gives us a platform that all the phones are almost having a capability to consume language in the most perfect way. But what about the content? What about the technology which we are building? Is it reaching to the masses? Is it impacting to the masses? So domain names, email addresses and websites are coming in that language. And I believe that if we can do something through our technologies to remove the barrier of learning English in person's life, we will see a different Bharat, a different India. Today, a programmer cannot become a programmer if he does not know English. Let us say if I am a top intelligent student in some village, can I learn Java? Can I learn PHP? Can I learn .NET? Answer is no. I cannot. Can I do my programming without learning English? So now I have another requirement to learn Java as a language, which is computer language, I must know another language that is English. That is the limitation which... So don't worry that things are working. People are working on that. There is a lot of work which has happened. Some Chinese and Russian uh, languages have already started getting into that zone where people are building softwares in those languages. And I am sure that this will come in India and we all, the techno people who are sitting on the dais in front of me, will think about it and make a difference in everybody's life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Data. In fact, inclusion is an important element of our Digital India Initiative. Now we have our next speaker, Dr. Rishi Mohan Bhatnagar, who is president of Aries Communication India. Just a brief introduction. He is an established thought leader, has co-authored the book title Enterprise IoT with Bosch and authored multiple articles, white papers and policy frameworks. He is chairman of multiple think tank platforms in India, including IET Future Tech Panel, Broadband India Forum, AI and IoT Committee, mentors multiple startup and advisor for conferences, universities, government think tanks in India and the SARC region. He is also recipient of multiple awards. He is recipient of IoT CEO award consecutively for the years 2021 and 2020 at national awards for excellence in technology under the category ET now, Business Leaders of the Year, Voice and Data, Leadership Recognition Award India 2019, India ISV IoT CEO of the Year 2018, and BTVI Business Leader of the Year 2018. Currently as board member and president of Aries Communication India, a pioneer in IoT and M2M technology company headquartered in Silicon Valley, he is leading Aries business in Indian subcontinent, MEA and the APEC region. Over to you, sir. 
So good morning, everybody. And uh, I'll tell my marketing team to reduce my introduction so that next time it takes less time. <laughs> so, 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 you know, at least uh, people could take the relevant things. So my name is Dr. Rishimon Bhatnagar, and I'm the president for Aries Communication. And uh, uh, rest, Atulji has already informed. So uh, uh, Madam Mukta ji, uh, Paritosh ji, Ajay ji, Bimal ji, Randhir ji, and Atul ji, it is a pleasure to be here, and I'm honored that uh, I think this is the third time I'm here and the first time in, in person for the Rajasthan Fiki IoT Summit. Uh, just an introduction of Aries, which will help you to see why I've been called here. <laughs> so we are a three-decade-old company, and we provide connectivity to machines. So, you know, we are a mobile virtual network operator, and our SIM goes into only machines. That can be a car, that can be a smart meter, that can be a health device, which is connected. And our SIM connects to the best possible network at a given location at a given time, which means that if Aries SIM is in a device here and the Vodafone connectivity in this particular room is good, it will connect to Vodafone. You go a kilometer away and Airtel is a better one, it connects to the Airtel. Because you need connectivity. You don't need Airtel or Vodafone. Okay? And our SIM provides that kind of facility. We have 15 million devices connected on our platform. 15 million. And we get 2.6 billion messages every day. And we have 60 IPs of our own on machine-to-machine -machine communication. And that, I think, is the reason why I've been called here, because I know a bit of Internet of Things. I used to work for Tech Mahindra, and Reva Car is something which I'm proud I worked on. So all the 130 plus sensors that are put into that car, I know where they were put, and how the data used to come, and how we used to do some kind of magical tricks to switch on the AC and switch off the AC, and see where the car is. And I also worked on the Mahindra Bird City Jaipur. With that kind of background, I just want to share, you know, and take the discussion on a different level altogether. The first revolution, and we call the industrial revolution that came, that was in 1800s, when suddenly there was a factory that started in Nottingham and England, and they started producing clothes. And all the charkha weavers in India, they lost their job, okay? And suddenly there was a huge revolution that started, or a production of maybe a few inches a day was converted into kilometers a day in a long distance. Many people lost their job, it was a major problem, and nobody was there to tell us that something is happening in England and you will lose your job, okay? The second revolution came, we were an independent country, we had our own government, and that was the communication, IT, uh, internet, whatever we call it, that was the kind of revolution that happened. And today's, you know, 10 million plus jobs in IT, we are the largest uh, SI in the world, 200, 200 billion of export, is what was, what is the achievement from that second revolution, okay? But Sundar Vichai couldn't get a job here, and he had to go to US. And we can name many of those, and uh, Satya Nadella, and many others, who were having that brain to create a Microsoft, create a Google, create something. They were not given an ecosystem here which could help them to create a Microsoft here or create a Google or a Twitter or LinkedIn here. They traveled, and that's what is happening. Today we are in the third revolution, where the hardware, devices, things are connecting to the service, that's the internet, and we are coming out with a different kind of models. But if I try to compare these three, th three areas, 1800s, then 1990s, and then 200, 2010, 2011, it took so many years for the first revolution, but from the first revolution to the second, it took around 150 years. From the second to third, 15 to 20 years. That means the human mind is maturing much faster. So in our lifetime, all of us sitting here have seen two revolutions, but get ready, we'll see many more. Because the human mind is maturing every day, and we will be coming with new and new things every day. What uh, just now Ajayji told about the 5G or metaverse, what I call, or many things, are the result of this human mind getting mature. We are trying to come out with our new problems, facing uh, new solutions to our problems. But the good part is that there we were under the British rule. Second, we were under the, our own rule, but we were able to utilize the opportunity, but not to the extent to create the unicorns. But today we have a government all in states as well as the center, which is working on telling everybody that skill yourself. Do something, otherwise you'll lose your job. 
providing that ecosystem and that ecosystem is the reason why there is a hundred plus unicorns created in India in the last eight months of this year. And most of them are technology. Okay. And uh, I had different uh, discussions on this particular topic. But today we have this Startup India, Stand Up India, Skill India. So many kind of policies and both states in the center are providing that ecosystem, that facility which is creating those unicorns. So we are at a time while the human brain is maturing, we are working, there is an ecosystem, there is a support from the policy makers. Okay? Because the startup, academia, industry and the policy makers all have to work together to see how that ecosystem works so that we can create those new solutions and new unicorns. Okay. While many of my uh, co-panelists have already spoken about solutions which are all going to be there and the kind of problems that are going to solve. Okay. But I just want to share three of mine <laughs> which might be a bit different from what uh, we have heard just now. So in 2016 when I started this company, Aries Communication in India, I was reading a Times of India uh, edit editorial where art of living has able to revive a river in Latour. And we all know what is Latour. Every time there's a famine, trains <laughs> sending water, people are getting a lot of problems. And they were able to revive a river. So I read more details, got more details, and I found that through geostationary satellites, they were able to find that the thousand years back, Latour had an 18 and a half kilometer river. And they were able to revive four and a half kilometer of that river, and they were able to use the ISA, IIC Bangalore and IIT Madras scientists to go there, work there, art of living, creating a project, taking the sand out, the stones out, and the four and a half kilometer river has been revived. I wrote a letter to them, and I said, sir, I have a technology by which this IASC Bangalore and IIT Madras scientists and the professor will not be required to travel to Latour. I will be able to give those connectivity to those machines and they will be able to see all of these things while sitting in their own office. I got an appointment and Guruji Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji called me to his residence. I was with him and he said, kya hai technology? And I said, Gurudev, this is the technology. He called his project team and he said, baat kariye inse, dekhe kya karte. On the water day in 2018, Art of Living sent a tweet saying that Aries technology helped them in starting the same reviving of water bodies in Maharashtra, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Because the same volunteer team could utilize that data what we could produce from the ground or from those machines on their mobile or laptops. And they were able to do so many things together. Today the whole team is working and trying to revive the water. So the climate change, the water, this is the major area where our technology can work and help the future generation. I have another example which I'll, uh, you know, we talk about many things and, uh, you know, I have access to many of the senior leadership in this country and I could get an appointment with the municipal commissioner. And what I was trying, I am, my job is to sell IoT solutions and get revenue and profit because my salary comes by generating revenue and profit. So I was in a job of selling. So I went to that commissioner and I can never forget because of the pressure on him, he gave me an appointment, offered me a cup of tea, but I could see that he's not interested. And I'm giving him, sir, I can do smart street lights, I can do this, I can do that. And in Hindi he said, Rishi ji, yahan machhar bhoat phehr rahe hain, bande dengu se mar rahe Mere paas limited log hain, limited dawai. Kya aapka technology mujhe un bandho ko bachwa sakta hai? So the real-time problem was not street light. The real-time problem was that people were dying because of mosquitoes. I said, sir, give me 10 days. Let me try. I worked with the, you know, that time, uh, Osmania University, Hyderabad. And what we tried to do, I, I knew that they had a pest sensor, which can tell the density of pest, which they had created. And ma'am was talking about the locust. Uh, there is a pest sensor. But if we can put those pest sensor, which we can get the density of pests. So I said, yaar, meko to machhar ke liye chahiye. Kya tum mere liye se machhar mein convert kar sakte ho? Will that sensor be able to get me? And they said, sir, mujhe do week chil lagenge. Mein kaya, do week le le. And after two weeks, I tested it myself. The third week, I was in front of the commissioner again. And I said, these are the places where I have put the sensor. This is my mobile app, which will tell you how much are the mosquitoes in these areas. Now you can save lives. This is the real-time problem. So water reviving must 
making uh, life of the citizens better was the problem. The third usage which we have been able to do is what we call as Zensai. It's a spec with cameras fitted, with totally inter integrated to a uh, cloud where features of everything is there. We are trying to say everything, but you know, to an extent possible. So if I am blind and if I wear it, I'll know on my left, Atulji is sitting around a meter away. This much meter away, there's somebody else. And there is a stair, there is this, there is this is an eye to a blind man. We have tested it. Right now we have been able to come out to a cost of around 8,000 rupees. We are trying to see how can I bring that cost to around 800 rupees and much cheaper so that it can be a mass usage. And that's what technology is. It is generating jobs. So the three things which I want to say that there will be new jobs that will get created. There will be new skills we have to acquire. So we as wherever, we, whatever our ages are, we have to learn to unlearn, relearn, and then unlearn, and then learn. Because till the time we'll continue thinking that Java is the language. We'll always think that we have to read English and learn Java and then to do things. Create your own language. Computer doesn't know. It will know what I'll tell them. And we have been able to do that. The second thing is the new, third thing is the new business models. And I last thing, because it will give a different kind of thought to you. Uh, you know, when we started selling Reva, nobody was buying it. Because it was seven and a half lakh rupee car, electric car, 100 kilometers, 100, uh, 100 kilometers, maximum drive, nowhere there was an infraction, nobody was buying it. It was a technology marvel, but nobody was buying it. We are into business, not into charity. So what we did, we started selling battery as a service. We always pay for your petrol every month. We said, we are going to, this battery is mine. You start paying me 5,000 rupees per month. So the cost of that car, the majority of the cost was the battery. So the moment I made battery as a service, it is a business model change. And you will find many of such kind of new ideas, whether it's e-commerce, that is Swiggy, or that Uber, that is Ola, they are the new business models. So this technology will be changing our skills, changing our jobs, and changing our business models. And we must be prepared for it. And uh, just uh, a last point. 5G, what we are talking about. I am already working on the 6G COE. OK? <laughs> because the kind of technology that we require is spacing at a, such a fast pace that I really don't know how far we'll be able to utilize 5G before we're going to have 6G. So the first thing which I said, our brain is maturing, our needs are maturing, and we will see more and more revolution in our lifetime. So get ready for unskilling and skilling. Thank you very much. Thank you. So unskilling and reskilling is the mantra. And moving forward, we have Mr. Paritosh Dandrial, who is director with Software Technology Park of India, Gurugram Jurisdiction. He joined uh, STPI as director at STPI headquarters in May 2016. As director at STPI, he looked after various technical services provided by STPI to IT industry, IT industry like planning, setting up, and functioning of STPI data centers at various locations, provisioning of data comm services, and functioning of STPI as class A ISP creation of IT grade infrastructure for STPI and incubation services for entrepreneurs and has been CISO of STPI. So welcome, sir, and over to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Madam Mukdasana, uh, Secretary, Science and Technology Government of Rajasthan, uh, Dr. Bhatnagar, uh, Mr. Patwari, uh, Mr. Data, who is also chief mentor for our NGIS, and then uh, we have Mr. Randhir and Mr. Atul Sharma. Uh, we, you all have heard a lot from our distinguished speakers, and uh, they are the experts in their field. They've told you a lot about uh, the technology and things like that. IoT 
as earlier we were discussing, it was always there, you know, since ages, it's only the jargon which kind of got, you know, popularized in the past few, maybe a decade, decade and a half back. And uh, while we're talking about our uh, this thing, uh, building a smart, secure, and connected ecosystem, I feel that uh, this ecosystem should also ensure that whatever technology is uh, being used for is also has a very you know large social impact uh, which uh, from the government side uh, we have to look after and that is apart from you know the people who are well off we are able also able to serve the underserved and the unserved that is where and when you know we will be able to have the full uh, benefit and advantage of the technology which is uh, being created. Uh, we all know India is a large country and uh, we have a diverse uh, uh, diversity in our you know, population. We have people from super rich to people who are barely able to manage and our technology should be able to assist mainly those who are not able to look after themselves. You know, the people who are well off they can always look after themselves. And uh, while listening to various speakers, uh, you know, we all come to know that uh, India has got one of the best brains. Uh, Indians are, you know, literally running Dubai and, you know, uh, Mr. Patwari, as he was mentioning. And uh, like the technology heads in the U.S., most of them are Indians. So we have uh, uh, enough and tremendous number of, you know, uh, human resources who are able to do things. A lot of them have returned back to India, like uh, Dr. Bhatnagar came back, and we have so many others who are back after having, you know, done whatever they wanted to do in their life. Now they come back to serve the country and serve the people of India. Uh, Software Technology Parks of India is in a society under the Ministry of Electronics and IT, and. Uh, uh, through us, because the government is there, the, the government uh, officials are all busy, they all are doing a good job, they all are, you know, uh, actually pro probably people from outside may not be aware, you know, the general impression of the government, you know, it's uh, this thing, but it's, I think, a little different. Everybody is sincerely working in all spheres, uh, like people outside. And uh, we uh, are there to support and implement the various schemes which are, uh, you know, made by the government for the IT industry. STPA started somewhere in 1991 to handhold the IT industry, which was in the nascent stage at that point of time, to provide them you know, various uh, uh, schemes, uh, the government schemes and the incentives which are there, so that the you know, IT industry progresses here and they're able to export software, we're able to get some uh, you know, very much desired, required foreign exchange and things like that. So at uh, that point of time, a number of schemes were there to promote them, uh, giving them a lot of benefits, tax incentives, and things like that. STPI was one of the first few who got uh, your, our internet. We were providing internet services through VSAT and through our uh, radio links, etc. And that's how we became a class A ISP, uh, which is an ISP, internet service provider, which has got pan-India license. We also were providing project management consultancy services to the uh, industry, maybe the government bodies and things like that. And slowly and slowly, STPI has now uh, a pan-India presence. We have 62 centers in India. Uh, we have uh, two centers in the uh, state of Rajasthan. One is in Jaipur and one is in Jodhpur. So uh, where does STPI come into play when we have uh, any anything like this? See, STPI on its own, normally we do implement the schemes, but at the same time, what we have started doing now is that uh, we have created 25 centers of excellence, we used to call them earlier, now we are calling them centers of entrepreneurship, because center of excellence was, you know, used to give a, this thing, it's more of an academia side or research oriented, whereas uh, our idea was to have the, you know, various emerging technologies coming up, supporting the startups in there, you know, uh, taking them from the idea to the uh, product and the business stage. And so it would be more apt to call it a center of entrepreneurship rather than excellence. And that is how we have uh, come up with the center of entrepreneurship. We are having around 25 centers of entrepreneurship coming up in various emerging technologies like uh, 
uh, IoT, we have an IoT lab in uh, STPA Bengaluru. We have a COE in uh, AECS automotive uh, electric connected uh, vehicles systems. Uh, we have a COE in uh, virtual and augmented reality. It is in uh, collaboration with IIT Bhuvaneshwar in which uh, Mr. Subrat Bakchi, he is an industry leader, you all must have heard of. He himself has been, you know, he has donated around five crores for that COE. So, because see, anything which we run, you know, you do need funding and all. You need funding for the whatever uh, startups who come, they need some lab assistance and things like that. Similarly, we have a COE in uh, STPL Mohali location, which is for artificial intelligence and uh, AVG. Uh, we have a COE in, on blockchain in now, blockchain is, uh, they say, is the next internet, right? And uh, Mr. Bhatnaga was talking about his various chips. And also, what I say these days, no technology can succeed without, you know, inputs or support from uh, other areas, whether it is uh, uh, artificial intelligence or your animation gaming or your uh, uh, maybe chip manufacturing industry, anything. So that is where now what ST we have done is, uh, we have created our COEs for the startups, and uh, how do we get our, uh, you know, uh, this? Uh, how do people uh, feel that okay, STPI would be the right place, the COEs? So we derive our strength from the our partnership with the IT industry and industry experts. Then we have uh, academia, we have the state government. So it's a collaborative effort, and. Uh, to give it more credence, our chief mentors are all industry experts. And uh, so that is one thing uh, which is there about SCOE. Next one is uh, STPI is also implementing Government of India's uh, scheme called Next Generation Incubation Scheme. Mr. Uh, Data is the chief mentor here for our NGI scheme here. This scheme is basically the we are selecting uh, startups you know, they've come up with excellent ideas, we select them and then we are able to provide them uh, funding of around 25 lakh rupees. Uh, somebody may say that, okay, the 25 lakh rupees in these days is not a very big amount, but then for some people it is, you know, quite a huge amount. And to give them an opportunity to, you know, start something, uh, that's a great thing. Our COEs, uh, see, what happens is at times, uh, we want to give people what we think is their requirement without you know even realizing that what exactly do they need and uh, this is where when we have the industry people the startups coming up the academy and all those kind of we realize and we find out what is their actual requirement for our coes apart from all those things we also provide them you know funding support in terms of once their product is ready they reach an ideation stage they need reach need a stage where we bring in investors who are able to you know, support them. You all heard of Shark Tank, right? So we also do this kind of thing, but the other investors uh, who are there, angel investors and all those, they come, they evaluate their product and then they support them with the various fundings. Now when I'm talking about this in Rajasthan, uh, somebody may say, okay, fine, you're having so many things, but uh, you know, uh, this is uh, state of Rajasthan, I am a startup here. How do I benefit in the sense that you have only, see in Rajasthan we do not have any COE here. Uh, but then we have a COE, so once you are connected with STPI, you can uh, make a use of all the COEs which are there. You can be connected with any of our COEs. And you also come to know what are the you know, various schemes and uh, policies of the government which are going to be useful for the industry and the startup. So uh, this is what I wanted to tell you about is this is how we work. And we would encourage uh, this... Uh, Directorate jurisdiction of uh, Gurugram was created, uh, which is having uh, the states of Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, Union Territory of Chandigarh, and JNK. Basically, we want to focus more on you know how can we support the industry. Uh, you see, the IT industry has been you know prominent in the state of Karnataka, uh, mainly in Bengaluru city. Thereafter, the state of Tamil Nadu, the Maharashtra, and Hedra, uh, Andhra Pradesh. They are the ones who are leading. What is there in the North Indian state that we cannot be, you know, uh, again, we cannot compete with all those, uh, you know, states because IT industry does not need, 
need you know, a support of a port or something like that. It's a, it can be anywhere in a landlocked environment. So why and see we have in Jaipur itself fantastic academic institutions. We have industry here and uh, the students and the startups here, they can you know uh, produce excellent uh, products. One of the primary aim of our NGIS scheme is to promote software product development in India and uh, have a large number of software products coming. I don't know whether you are aware of Indian IT industry is uh, uh, quite famous in the world but it is more on the service sector. India's uh, pie share uh, in the world pie of software products is minuscule. Where it's a huge, huge market there. And the idea of this NGIS was to basically promote uh, industry, software industry in developing software products because you are a you know, service in, in industry has uh, some you know, advantages but at the time the biggest uh, spin-offs or the biggest, uh, you know, the, the largest uh, returns you get in product industry and uh, that is where the market is not tapped by India so much and we uh, must have that kind of a, uh, ecosystem where the startups are able to develop products and uh, market them around the world. So that is what I have to say about uh, my presence here, that about STPI and what, what all we are doing. I am sure that you know uh, you will have enough support from the government of Rajasthan and uh, the local industry and academia that we are able to have you know IT industry coming up in the state of Rajasthan, which is you know able to give competition to the other states and other industries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the role of STPI in promoting entrepreneurship. And now our keynote speaker, Ms. Mukda Sena, Secretary of Science and Technology, and she is a IAS officer of 1999 batch. And in her previous capacity, she has worked as Secretary of Art, Literature, Culture, and Archaeology, Food and Civil Supplies, Commissioner for Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor, Managing Director for Rajasthan State Industrial Development and Investment Corporation Limited, Director with Ministry of Commerce, Indust Industry, and Textiles, Government of India. Uh, officer on a special duty to Honorable Minister of Textiles and has been collector and district magistrate of Shri Ganganagar, Junjunu, Hanmangarh, Bundi and various other important positions in government of Rajasthan. She is MPhil in International Diplomacy, Master of Arts in International Relations and Bachelor of Arts Honours in History. Welcome ma'am. Very good morning to everyone and uh, at the outset, uh, thank you very much Vicky for having me at your fourth uh, summit on the Internet of Things. The esteemed panelists today, very, very happy to learn uh, from all of you. So I'll quickly make a mention. Uh, very happy to meet you, uh, Dr. Rishi Bhatnagarji, Bimal Patwari ji, Ajay ji, Paritosh ji, uh, Vikram Singh ji, and of course Atul ji for calling me and to all uh, guests and invitees, uh, people from the media, thank you very much. My job has been made difficult because I'm the last speaker and I'm sure by this time, uh, this is more than a 50 minute class, so I'm sure you've got bored, so my task becomes very difficult. Also because a lot of erudition has come about in what my previous speakers have sent. So I am going to try and make things complicated so that we can simplify them as we uh, speak. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, Dr. Bhatnagar spoke about how uh, the spinning wheel got impacted with the factories coming up in Manchester. I'm a policy maker, I'm no expert on internet, but my job as the IoT of policy making, uh, what IoT does is basically the sensors and the actuators, as Dr. Ajay said, uh, connect machines and their outcomes to each other through a collection, compilation, collation and analysis of data to reach a certain outcome. That outcome can be used in any uh, sector. It, can, it has been used, in fact industrial IoT is a hundred billion plus uh, sector, uh, has found the maximum impact there. IoT if you look stands on three or rather four broad pillars. 
of course you always have the uh, hardware side which is where sellers will sell you which is where the government will do tenders and do procurement uh, there will be softwares which will be backed very important the who holds the proprietary rights of those softwares because the tenders in the government are a three year four years so for policy makers very very important technology is a tool never forget that because there will be of the same technology there will be many service providers right and somebody also mentioned here that service sector i think paritosh ji just mentioned that a service is becoming actually a sellable function so you will have fas uh, which is function as a service in the internet of things uh, don't want to complicate instead of service servers you will have containers you will have platforms uh, and there'll be as many number of sellers so if you go to amazon and you are doing any purchase even a, a simple purchase as say for example a bangle or, or say for example a mobile the the amazon at the end for that matter any e-commerce platform gives you a kind of a comparative analysis across parameters of which product you should buy and which product is better where there's also a consumer feedback which tells you how many people have bought it and reviewed it and given a feedback so based on these kind of decision making parameters you are today making your purchase or procurement decisions what is going to get complicated with IoT is your decision making process why because we are living in an age of infocalypse too much of information design theory tells us that if you have more than 6 choices your decision making time goes up by leaps and bounds so the first impact will be that but before i actually jump into iot and decision making and how it will impact not just policy makers and all suppliers of the so called consumeristic world we are both the demanders and the consumers and we have a right because we are paying for the services we have a right because democracy is based on of the people by the people for the people so we have a right to remain at the center of decision making and not at the receiving end of decision making and that is my job because a lot of people here spoke about unserved underserved disadvantaged people just four small things i will tell you and provoke you into thinking because in this small session not much can be said uh, it will take many hours to do this kind of discussion but look at these four words and apply it in your own uh, neuro brain circuitry to figure out what iot would mean in terms of the vastness and the complexity and the depth of things see with is officers civil servants you also question generalist specialist so when i tell you there's a depth of expertise happening and there's this connection of dots what is happening with internet of things for technology for that matter technology is like the needle and policy making is the thread as a good policy maker or a good technologist is one who can anticipate the future kal kya hoga mujhe aaj pata hona chahiye mujhe yesterday pata hona chahiye tha ki what was going to happen tomorrow then i can make policy otherwise if i am making policy in a present age i am only making policy as a regulator not as an anticipator of what can happen that is important so my four a's are going to be this to just show you what the canvas is like the first a is accumulation we are aspirational people we want the best in everything so there is accumulation of technologies which has happened number of technologies which is coming up we are accumulating till about when i was in school college my hands were free my hands only had an hmt watch today i have mobile laptop in so many so many things right then the application of these technologies so i said accumulation of technologies then with each technologies there diverse application so first we multiply and then we consolidate and say why can't this device only do the work of the camera why can't the mobile only become the camera first we invent the camera then we say okay let's go back and see can we do all this work with one a device so that is applicability so accumulation applicability then the third is speed and scale which in my third a is acceleration so camera is moving from camera with a uh, higher resolution camera is now getting part of the drone technology so acceleration is happening newer generations 
you are downloading softwares every moment there is a notification your you have to up, upgrade so i don't know whether we as human beings our brains will be able to keep pace with the kind of upgradations the technology is possible or the iteration the technology is possibly doing so accumulation application acceleration and the fourth is amplification we are living in the world of social media so there's amplification happening amplification is noise basically it's going to impact us majorly i'm going to stop here take a break here and then go back to what dr rishi in fact what he started the lecture with uh, the dialogue i i should say he said something very interesting about our cotton as part of the colonial i am a student of history i have to not pick up that point he made from a policy makers perspective he spoke about technology the industrial revolution the steam engine which actually enabled britain to have the liverpool and the manchester factories working and enabled the colonization of the world and that in an in europe was known as the age of enlightenment right never never forget forget that so there is a social impact of technology how technology is going to impact society and society is all of us me and you together a part of society so there was a rule and this is a policy makers perspective about inertia in policy making and how technology will actually throw away all our inertia which is very good for people like us i really enjoy the disruption the disruption is not only restricted to technology the disruption is going to happen in policy making and that is the beauty that i'm really waiting for and thank you for telling us that we have scope abroad <laughs> because here i think the scope is very very limited uh, in the ecosystem so how will how did it happen in the 18th 19th century there was a rule in britain britain the britishers did not know because it's a cold country the britishers had never used till before india got colonized by them the east india company came of what cotton was what calico was what linen was and what muslin was ye char tarah ke kapde hain inke bare mein there was no use no knowledge okay and india was producing the finest varieties of this it is in fact believed that in bangladesh the muslin sari could pass through the through the ring right that is the kind of finesse we had and we were just using our hands and the charkha is a very very small kind of a uh, technological intervention that was happening so there was a rule in britain when when the east india company started importing their wools and everything were very heavy and they had to wear hats of course it was compulsory clothing by policy so when east india company started exporting our lighter nicer beautiful looking clothes there was a public revolt against that act which says that you have to wear woolens so never why why i have mentioned this and that act had to be withdrawn by the parliament you can read more about it in most history books that we've read it's there it should be somewhere on google you can read details but i'm just saying how introduction of a new technology export coming out of those technologies can actually lead to a mini revolution in how people think how people consume goods and that is going to apply also to the internet of things my concern as a policy maker because we will be bombarded and rishi ji is absolutely right when he says that now the time lag between one technology and the next is going to definitely get reduced in fact every day is technological revolution you will only see it as evolution but it is happening all the time how are you and me you know there's a lot how is it going to impact employment how are, how should we think of what are the new skills that will develop my job as a policy maker who is dedicated to the people is to be able to anticipate what are the new jobs that i need to start preparing and writing curricula for if i have to absorb that technology of tomorrow and make my citizenry absolutely at par 
because it's not the corporates it's not the technologists it's not the specialist but why are, why is everybody coming to india we are so 1.2 billion plus people and growing today faster than china in the next two decades we will be on top scale with our aspirations with a young population 65% of the population less than 35 in the uh, income creating bracket vis-a-vis -vis europe which is already a dying old nation people are coming here to sell their products and technology we have to understand that you make one effort by one pitch in india and you have a huge market vis-a-vis -vis having to compare and go to so many other countries and we are we are rich we are wealthy people we have a lineage we are intelligent people how should policy making and where should we adopt this right now see i'll give you a, even a simpler example you switch on your remote your television works with your remote from a distance that is iot and remotes have been there since donkeys of years your key that opens the car with a blip is one of the functionalities of internet of things machines are talking to machines today it is believed that if you don't take out your battery from any of your electronic gadgets the gadgets are still speaking the gadgets are still collating information about you that is why there is encryption on your whatsapp which says what you are doing is secure this conference today is talking of being smart technologies are becoming smart human beings will be dumbed by dumbed down by technology because there is a range of people and it's just not people who don't know language computer has its own language anybody can learn our linguistic language or lingo does not in my understanding come in between learning computer language but there is a new language which is occurring the language of complexity the language of being under surveillance all the time even without your wanting so what will happen we will have to work on not just securing the systems but also securing see there is a default mode today right in all policies there is a default mode the red herring prospectus of insurance policies today in the morning i read that after lockdown lot of insurance policy surrenders have happened because of those red herring small very in small letters the things that are written in the insurance policies which we don't read which when we go to end cash we figure out that there is a problem there in the internet of things where each gadget is talking you don't even know what part of you is getting collated you can get cloned today simply by use of your biometric fingers today also in the newspaper there was a news that one person had removed his skin and adopted this grafting of his friend's skin to take an exam that is where technology is going so how do you secure how do you have a cert the central emergency response team that you have in government of india so wherever there is a breach happens whose responsibility is the breach is it the responsibility on the uh, only of the government to protect its citizenry against a breach no wars are going to happen there will be no third world war which will be fought between armies it will be fought on technology platforms the people who are selling you the technology will they be responsible for putting in money to ensure national security because a breach in one company can expose the data of citizens that has been collected how do you secure your smart iot i'm not saying they are not benefits benefits so many people have told you faster decision making efficiency on costs but remember faster identification of where the decision has to be made but not necessarily quicker decision making there's a there's a difference between faster detection and quicker decision making so that we have to ensure of course there's connected machines will connect to machines i hope they will not alienate and isolate human beings as such that is my question policy making 
have to have exceptions today when we were making policies nobody was interested in the review and the exception list of policy making tomorrow what to keep out of the policy because the policy is a default mode that will become important what to keep out will become very very important because if we don't keep out everybody consent will become important your privacy will become important also tell me something i always ask myself there is so much of surveillance there the cameras everywhere but why do they only work as evidence post something has happened which is also good i am not denying that by the idea of having such integrated complex in depth technology is to be able to anticipate disaster before it happens anticipate a terrorist attack before it's happened Ant anticipate a crime before it can occur so we have to and this cannot happen only by technology this has to happen through our policy making which can understand the complexity of this technology so in my understanding if technology remains as a slave it will work well but if we allow it us allow it to master us and you know not just the crown but the head on the feet of technology then that is where we are going to get into danger upgradation skilling and identification of the range so there is a range in technology there is also a range in human beings the range of the child what all how much can you expose your children to to what all technologies what all do you need to skill children how then the geriatric population then the class impact so we have to look at all these kind of things and i'm not bothered about 5g or 6g because i'm also not bothered about the hardware i'm bothered about the software because that is where the skill is going to is going to exist and that is where we need to have command that is a skill that everybody should no it's going to be an additional language that we will have to in times learn there will be scope for new kind of maybe not just new kind of professions but let me say a different recalibration of professions today you have lawyers for litigation tomorrow you will have lawyers to draft all those terms and conditions and fight on those terms and conditions because there is something called a consumer act people will actually be fighting based on the usage of internet of things that is going to happen so how are you so when you say smart connected ecosystem please also factor in human beings how can we make human beings smart in a technology which is emerging and becoming smarter than us that is that is my understanding my role of how policy makers should interact with technologists and integrate see i'll give you an example and if iit can do it then i think this should be adopted by everybody because iit is like a benchmark of india's policy making understanding at least in the field of science and technology so what iit has done it was there in the papers at least it was in the news i don't know whether it was in the papers so iit has set up a digital virtual department of integrated research of science with social sciences education human resource development and educating the citizenry as a whole will require ethnography infographics knowledge of sociology knowledge of anthropology because that is how you are going to make not just technology smart but also governance smart that is absolutely essential how do you educate the people you have to tell them simplify it what ajay ji was saying can we simplify knowledge because there is so much today if your child has to learn something from the internet you have 10000 lectures on one subject which one to choose which is the best sifting will become sorting will become very very important you have an abhay center in in the police which does a lot of surveillance 
traffic, accident, very good. But we as human beings will have to have the focus and dedication to be able to sit through all those reels which are being, or information that is being generated from that heap to figure out something, maybe a nanosecond second clip that will be important for the purpose, say for an accident or for crime detection. That so much of time with complexity, so much of time will be required. Where is that time and where is that human resource going to come from? So that is going to become important. I only wanted to provoke because we cannot at any stage in real time understanding say because we are moving from the fourth dimension. See, the beauty of science and technology, in science, we are moving to the fourth state of matter. The first state of matter is solid, liquid, gaseous, and the fourth state of matter is plasma. Right? When hydrogen becomes so heated above 1200 degrees centigrade that it breaks into helium and further on, so then you have plasma and plasma is finding application in nanotechnology in textile industry so many places of course tesla's coil has become a reality today in communication lnt is starting a tokamak in france in nice which is going to do your nuclear fission so that is science technology of course we are in generation 4.0 of technology Public administration, which actually is going to integrate all this, was in the fifth stage in 1960s, and we haven't moved beyond that. As a policy maker, we will have to look at how we are going to, using all that which is happening around us, move to the fourth stage of policy making, which will be based on crowdfunding and citizenry, where the focus will be the citizen, putting the citizen at the center of governance, making the citizen smart to be able to negotiate the intricacies of this very, very difficult network that we are going to create. I hope I have not depressed you, the weather outside uh, is any which way is depressing. I am an eternal optimist, but the idea is to provoke, 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 so that we can rise up to the challenge of thinking better than we thought. We cannot have technology and our orders cannot be the orders of the bullock cart generation, which is what picks me all the time. We need, a revolution is ha happening outside, a revolution needs to happen in the policy making stage. We have to leapfrog there, which we are still doing in small measures, but I think more effort is required so that we can actually be of use and somehow redeem ourselves as the bureaucrats of the country and policy makers of the country and also probably uh, be able to walk shoulder to shoulder with the de technologists and, and tell them that not expertise but a futuristic understanding of how to connect the dots because our stakeholders are the same, it's, it's the common people uh, and we are working for them. So thank you very much for having me. Every time you have me in a pachala like this, I end up reminding myself that the Gandhiji's talisman will always remain fundamental, whatever kind of revolution you have. And I'll end with that. And that revolution is every time you think of technology, every time you think of policy making, look at the last man standing in the line. And if your, your technology and your policy making can benefit him, irrespective, then I think you've done your job. So I hope I have done my job today. Thank you very much. Good luck and all the best. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for bringing an altogether different perspective to the debate. And uh, I'm sure uh, s safety and security is an integral part of the entire uh, IoT space. And uh, before I invite uh, Patwari ji for vote of thanks, we would like to present the memento. I would request Mr. Randhir Vikram Singh ji to present the memento to uh, Ms. Mukda Sinha, Secretary Science and Technology. I request Mr. Bimal Patwari ji to present it to uh, Mr. Paritosh Dandriyal ji, Director Software Technology Park of India.
I would request Dr. Ajay Data to present the memento to Dr. Rishi Mohan Bhatnagar. Request uh, Mr. Bimal Patwari to present it to Dr. Data. Thank you. I would request Mr. Bimal Patwari ji to present it to Mr. Randhir Vikram Singh ji as well. And lastly, I will request uh, Randhir ji to present it to Mr. Patwar, <laughs> the committee chairman. Thank you. And now I would request uh, Patwari ji to conclude the session. Good afternoon, everyone. I have been to so many conferences, but I must honestly admit that the deliberations today were simply awesome. I think I would like to congratulate Fiki for bringing experts from such diverse background and the kind of deliberations and the Think, uh, presentations that we had, I must say, was amazing. I thank ma'am for Mrs. Mukda Sina for bringing a very interesting aspect of the technology, right? The technology is there, we can develop it in labs. But the last man in the queue that she said, it must be relevant for that person. It must be useful for that person. And you really brought a nice perspective of, from the policy making, because we engineers, we are passionate about technology, we keep designing things, but you know that the microchip in our head, you know, I'm really worried about that. <laughs> it is going to be the biggest disruptor in, the, in, the, in our society probably. Dr. Rishi Bhatnagar, I was amazed. I was not aware that, you know, what I liked about your presentation was that you have brought it, you have implemented it, you, you are grounded. You know, the example of getting the mosquitoes, uh, you know, the, that was amazing, you know, to, to transform your technology to, to make it effective, you know, that takes the cake, you know. So, you know, thank you so much for coming down and presenting. Ma'am, thank you so much for coming down, you know, of your busy time. Every deliberation that, you know, I have participated and heard you, it has been very amazing. Thank you so much. Dr. Paritosh, uh, Mr. Paritosh Dhamdiyal, uh, you know, your thank you so much for coming down and telling us more about STPI, the Center of Excellence because we have been an STPI unit since 1990, or 90, no, sorry, 91, 92. So we know we have been there from the very beginning, and I've seen how STPI, when I was a small kid, you know, you, you, have, you have 
you have empowered me, you have enabled me, and uh, you know we really admire the work STPI has done. Uh, I am the biggest witness to that. So thanks for taking out your time and coming here and building this great ecosystem for our country. Thank you, Dr. Ajay Datta. It's amazing, you know, your passion and again, you I, I like for your groundedness, you know, to to sense what people need. Thanks for coming down and, uh, you know, this excellent deliberation we had. Thank you, Mr. Randir Vikram Singh Ji, I mean, for organizing this whole event. And, uh, you know, thank you, Atul Ji, for, and the whole FIKI team, uh, Dimple and everybody behind the scene. Uh, you know, everybody is so busy. Now, still people are getting used to this physical conferences. And finally, all of you for attending this, listening to us, and uh, thanks everyone for this great uh, program. And I'm sure the next session that we are going to have is going to be even more interesting because we have very expert speakers there and uh, wish this uh, program a great success. Thank you everyone for this. Thank you. We will have a quick tea break uh, and then we will join back for the next session.